Hello there, I'm Blackbright, broadcasting out of the UK, into your homes, onto your phones, whichever way you choose to watch me. Um, I just wanted to welcome you to my channel. You're welcome to like, dislike, share and um, subscribe. And for those of my returning subscribers, I just want to thank you as usual for your support, for your comments, for your emails, for your interactions with each other and your comments and feedback to me. Um, today, I wanted to kind of elaborate a little bit more on the herd mentality and how it impacts us in today's climate. So basically, the herd mentality is where, well, it was taken from where a herd of animals um, migrated together. And they then extended that to humans. The only difference, of course, is with humans, we've got a mind, we have a brain that we don't always use. And because many of us are so keen to be accepted and we don't want to be ostracized and set apart from everyone else, we tend to follow the leader. We tend to follow blind. And we're tending to look for assurance, validation, all of those things that make us want to feel part of a group. And what you'll find is that not only the media, but anybody who has anything to sell, they'll kind of hone in on that weakness of us as human beings. And as human beings, as long as you want to be included, you want to be accepted, you don't like to be isolated, you don't want to be on your own, you are going to be a part of the herd mentality. Those who are free thinkers, those who have uh, who are more rational and who think on the spot and who go by gut instinct, they're actually seen as deviants. They're called rogue thinkers. They're actually people you don't really want to have anything to do with. And um, they did have this, um, which is what called. Um, they were considered rogues. That's why they hung them, because they weren't the norm. They weren't the same as everybody else. And I think it was in 1692 they hung them because they were different. People didn't understand them. And it, I guess the equivalent of that would be astrologers, um, people who do tarot cards, anything like that, anything that the majority do not understand and they frown upon is considered not the norm, you're not conforming, you're not one of us, so therefore, you know, they get pounced on. And sometimes it can be quite dangerous. So here we are now with the herd mentality with regard to the virus. Anybody who kind of has some kind of conspiracy theory, anybody who don't just who doesn't just go along with what's happening and you know accepting what's happening and just you know, doesn't question it, they're fine. But those who question it will be put upon, if not now, eventually. So that is my, the best way I can explain the herd mentality for you. Um, so it's influenced by peers and rather the rational, it's kind of hyped up by the emotional. Um, rogue thinking are those trendsetters who do not conform they rely on their gut and their instincts, and they're the ones who tend to be ostracized. And they're usually the ones who don't mind being ostracized. But nevertheless, that is the penalty. Sometimes um, it's they say that we're groomed to be violent. We're primed for violence with this herd mentality because you're setting one set of people against the other. And those people will rebel in the end and, you know, attack whatever they feel threatened by. Because as much as we're human, we have animal instinct. And in order to protect ourselves and what we have, whether it's our family, whether it's our home, whether it's food, you've seen people fighting for bloody toilet rolls. You know, they turn into animals. All of a sudden, they're no longer human. They're no longer rational human beings. It's like they have to survive and those toilet rolls is what's going to help them to survive. So therefore, they've got to get it and they'll do anything to get a toilet roll, including fighting a fellow human being, even though on the surface it doesn't make sense. There is no shortage of toilet rolls. 
you go all the way in the pack. I mean, my daughter called me and she said you can get three ply. That's the good one of toilet rolls for 99p in the pound shop in Dunstable. Not, I think she said it was a pound shop or one of those discount shops. And she said there's stacks of them, stacks of them. So I don't know. It's almost like people are going to the main supermarket expecting them to accommodate their needs. And so they're doing them out of business. Well, not out of business. They're taking all of them off the shelves and it's giving people the, the, the um, idea that there is a shortage when there isn't. That's what another example of the herd mentality, what people are telling you, what the majority are telling you and whether or not you go along with it. Follow the leader, whether or not the leader knows where he or she is going. So, and now we've got Contagion, that movie that came out with Gwyneth Paltrow. People are sending that around, creating fear. I mean, that was based on, which virus was that based on? That was based on the um, Nipah, Nipah virus, N-I-P-A-H, which, which had a 50 to 75% rate of deaths. So if you contracted it, 50 to 75% of people would die from it although it wasn't so infectious, as opposed to coronavirus, which they claim is 3% 3 are likely to die, but it's more infectious. So people are now bandying around this, this contagion video, and that's once again going to create fear. It's going to create paranoia. And I don't know why people do it. And as much as, you know, you tell people, I don't want to know curiosity or whatever it is in the human psyche, makes them curious they don't want to miss out on something and they get caught up in it so we may think that the herd mentality is harmless but thousands of people can panic and that's what i've already said um you've got people who have been neglected from birth who've been ostracized from their parents who've been abandoned you know, you have a lot of children, young people, who ache for that kind of um, herd mentality, what they call peer, peer-to-peer -peer, um, endorsement or validation. You know, when you watch these kids going to school, they want to be a part of the in-group. They want to be a part of the popular group. So it's ingrained from young that you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself. And when you can find something that everybody else has something in common with you, you they're likely to gravitate to that, especially if they were denied that kind of validation, acceptance and love and nurturance as children. So, and that's the majority of people these days, but especially young people, the majority of people haven't grown up with that, with a feeling of inclusion and endorsement and validation. So they then jump onto this herd mentality um, bandwagon and off they go. So um, it's basic human behaviour to follow the leader. Uh, people under pressure do what others do, hence the panic buying. Hence what we've seen in the shops with the toilet rolls. Irrational behaviour becomes amplified to a large group and then it becomes dangerous. Humans imitate. Have you noticed, I don't know if you've noticed, but have a look around at how many women have those black quilted coats. It's almost like if one person gets them, I think 70% of the people where I work have a black coat quilted coat and I've noticed that similar hairstyles they don't get me at all because I'm always wearing different wigs and I'm always having different hairstyles they don't get me at all because I go against the grain with regard to I'm not a conformist in that way I'm not going to wear what everybody else wears if I like the coat I might get it but I'm not going to get it in black like what everybody else has got I'll probably get it in yellow or red or blue or something 
So, um, regardless of common sense or cost, people will imitate each other to get a feeling of camaraderie. And have you noticed, you probably have noticed, especially in the UK, one, one neighbour does something to the house, next minute you know, the next neighbour's doing it, and then the next neighbour, and then the next neighbour, until all the houses have done it. So, um, it's very dangerous when masses of people latch on to false information, and I'm not even saying that this information about the coronavirus is false. What I'm saying is that people are latching onto the negative. And they're not being rational. So the attack is on the minority who do not agree. And the virus scare is setting us all up for mass vaccinations. And I don't know if you heard about the SV40. That was combined with the polio vaccine. And it went, it caused all sorts. I mean, some people, some sources say it caused cancer. Some people say it caused um um, polio. So you have to be so careful. You know, sometimes these scientists, it's all experimental. They they use it on animals first and then they decide to use it on, on humans. I don't know why they feel that what works on animals is going to work on humans when we've got different brains and different makeup, different DNAs. Why would they think that what they use on monkeys is going to work on humans. I don't get it. And unless they experiment on humans to find out who, if it works, and they can't do that, really. I mean, they have done it in the past to prisoners. They have done it. And it was, you know, disastrous consequences. But the fact of the matter, they have done it. So... In 1955 to 1963, millions were exposed to the SV40 vaccine. Um, but this is disputed again. Ah, oh dear. Well, it's not disputed that it existed. It's not ex disputed that millions were exposed to it. What is disputed is the impact of it, whether or not it was polio or cancer that that was the cause of the SV contaminated vaccine or the polio contaminated vaccine. Anyway, it's a combination of the two. Anyway, um, what is the answer? Once again, individual health regime, strengthened immune system, nutrition, exercise, sleep and sunlight. And yeah, you know, I um, did a video, I think early hours of the morning, talking about my knee and I decided to go to the GP. Well, I went to the GP normally you get there at quarter to eight, it opens at 8.30. You can't even get, there's a long, long line. You don't even know if you're going to get seen. Nobody. About two cars in the car park. And then there's a gate with a notice. We are not opening up this surgery. You're not going to be able to come in unless you have an appointment. And even if you have an appointment, if you're not well, you still can't come in. So the good thing was I didn't have to wait. But the not so good thing was is that somebody comes with a gate, through the gate, with their pen and paper. Your information is open to everybody. Well, there was about three people behind me, but that's not the point. Your, your personal information is supposed to be confidential. You're not supposed to be telling people your name, your age, your address, in public for everybody to hear and then they're saying oh well we're protecting our staff and we're protecting patients so you're talking to somebody through a bloody gate and what she said was we're going to send you away and the doctor will call you and he'll give you advice over the phone well the doctor did call said they'll send me for some x-rays, which I was surprised. I thought they was going to say they weren't going to do anything with what was going on. But the fact of the matter is, is that what is the point? I can understand them wanting to protect themselves. But isn't it enough to just say, if you've got any colds? Because if everybody took that stance, there wouldn't be anybody around. What about the poor shopkeepers who have to serve? If that was the, if that 
that if they had that premise for everyone, you're going to stick a big gate up and you're not going to interact with anybody. I can understand with a surgery, most people go there because they are sick. If you've made it clear that if you're sick or you've got a cold, you're not allowed to come. And I mean, people go for all different things, like I went for a knee, another lady went for something wrong with her back. But if you cannot get in and sit down and see a doctor, even though you're well in all other ways, supposing that kind of extends, everybody has that attitude. That means the banks are going to say they're not going to be serving customers. Shops are going to say they're not serving customers. You're going to go to work. You can't go to work because you don't want to interact with your colleagues. Does that make any sense? Social distancing. That is what this is called. Separating yourself from everyone. And Jeremy Hunt's concerned that public events are not being cancelled. But we talked about that already. Costs too much money to cancel football matches. Football matches make too much money. They're not going to cancel that public event for love or money. Unless, of course, God forbid, all the footballers catch it. Then what will they do? So we we've had quite a few viruses in the past we have the nipa nipa virus n i p a h which um emanated from southeast asia we had the ebola which they said was west africa we had the marburg virus which was germany and they said all three of those and including the coronavirus actually is has an origin from bats and that's why they're kind of talking about China because they eat bats but we don't know the real origin you know we can only um, we can only go by what they say and does it make sense who am I to say I'm just the messenger and that's all for now bye bye